Hey guys, how's it going? So, Advent just came out again, and this time it's Magnar. So the last time we were doing the uh, Ice Boss, and this time we've got this guy. Overall, I think that this one is much harder than the last one, actually. I think it has a lot more RNG mechanics built in as well. Um, his phases seem a little bit more difficult in some ways. Um, I'm actually not even going to really try to do Epic Hell, to be honest. Uh, I think it's a huge waste of time. You don't actually get that many rewards. You can finish all the reputation stuff to get this dark connection right here. And in the shop, you don't really have to do it to get these. Um, you can buy 10 of them. That lets you buy all the dark connections. And you can buy two more gem boxes, so maybe the immunity or crit one, depending on what you're going for. But the other ones don't really matter. You don't need them that much. And so you can kind of just farm everything else normally. So I don't even think it's really worthwhile. I think newer players... Um, the ones who can do this and are able to actually beat hard mode should just be spamming hard. They are not going to be able to do hell or epic hell. But uh, for people who are more mid game or close to end game at least, I would say more end game people are dealing with hell mode. Um, and epic hell is like if you want to go a little step beyond. So I was farming hell mode and this is the team that I was running. So You'll notice that I have three ML5s in the middle team. This team is uh, very variable though. You can use a bunch of different characters, and this one uses one ML5, but otherwise this is like Wyvern kind of units. Um, I just kind of threw some sort of budget units in some of the ways, right? Um, the main thing though is the mechanics, and understanding how they work is what's important. There's a bunch of different teams that you can actually run, and I'll show some after, but let me just show you how my run goes. Now this run is a little bit bootleg in some ways, honestly. It's not really anything too crazy. So, I'm not dealing with epic hell, so I don't have to deal with those mechanics. But the main thing to note here is that the boss um, has a bunch of damage reduction when it's not somebody else's turn. Uh, like, when it's not his allies or his turn. So he gets all this damage reduction here. Um, and also increases combat readiness when hit. So, pretty much what you have to do is you need a bunch of counterattacks to damage him. So, you'll notice, like... Hitting him, he has a little skill null, just gonna get rid of that. He gets pushed up. When he's attacking, it disappears, and he just attacked. She counterattacks, and that's when we're actually able to do damage. So then Rem also counterattacks. Characters like SSB, Cesarado, uh, ML Ken all work as well. But all that really matters is you want to try and do as much damage as you can uh, while it's not your turn. And something that's important is if you take too long to kill him, notice he gets increased attack and speed every single time that you hit him. So if you're having a really long grind fest in the first one, then the second and third waves are going to be a lot more difficult. So that's something that you should be a little worried about overall. Now, something to note is that I did not change any of my uh, units up for this event. Um, all of my characters have the same gear that they have for PvP, etc. Some of these units I don't even use in PvP, they're just kind of hanging out in PvE. But in general, I didn't really try to do anything, so you can optimize these teams a lot better. Okay, so we're going to phase the boss right here. First phase done. Goes in the second one. And so for this one, the reason why I have all of this is I have a ton of AoE. So the main thing with this is if all of the adds here, both of these guys have buffs on them, then he gets a buff that speeds up the whole team. Or maybe it's just him, actually. I believe speeds him up a ton. So you have to get rid of those buffs. So Stray's able to get rid of the buffs and also do AoE damage. Um, and also Arbiter Vildred does a lot of AoE damage. This team is very strange, and there's other teams that you can use. This is not at all the best team. However, it just works pretty well, and it doesn't take a super long time, which is why I like it. So, Apocalypse Rob is able to tank easily. Notice we removed the buff off of this one. Um, the other one put its buff on, but that's fine. It's only if both of them have buffs on that you're in trouble. And so, we're just kind of dealing with it. it lots of counterattacks and other stuff are happening. Um, you can get bad RNG sometimes, and it'll only attack strays or only Arbiter Villager. But in general, this team has not failed me so far. So I think it's probably fine, even if it does uh, target them. So Arbiter Villager comes back, he's going to stun that one. Being able to stun these little devices make it so they're not able to put their buffs on as much, which is always great. So we actually killed both of them, so they're both stunned. Um, so I'm pretty much just trying to rush down this phase, so I have no debuff removal or anything. But if you actually let all of its team get uh, 
those buffs on and he gets his special buff, it makes it so that he's, he puts a ton of burns. When he tries to attack one person, he'll then do a second attack that hits everybody and burns. So you can't let him have buffs. Fairy Tail Tenebria can work here to deal with that. I've seen Angel of Light as well. There's a lot of different options though. I've seen uh, Tamarin and Politis used with uh, Yellow Violin. So you just have to find some way to be able to do a good amount of damage, possibly in AoE, while also being able to um, uh, strip. You just have to get the damage and the strips down. So notice it has that buff now, which is pretty scary, right? Critical hit chance and speed by 20%. Now, it looks pretty dicey, but we're actually fine here. I have not lost yet at all with this team. They're much more efficient teams, though. See? Not even close. Now, in the third phase, pretty much all we try to do is rush it down. So, the main mechanic here is if you don't crit, then the boss removes debuffs. So, I have not changed my Amelia at all, so she has no crit chance. Uh, she does have the extra from being water against fire, but in general, you know, she's gonna miss a lot of crits. So I'm pretty much just trying to rush it down with as much damage as I can. This is my Wyvern Clarissa, so just full damage on Daydream Joker, and this Luna is the one I use for Expos, but I don't use her for anything else, and she's not really on Amazing Gear. So notice, it lost the defense break, so, you know, kind of unlucky, but it's to be expected since I didn't try to optimize this at all. But the main thing here is this team doesn't require anything too crazy overall. Um, I'm using very suboptimal things and it's overall fine. Uh, keep in mind this is hell difficulty and on epic hell difficulty things start to get a little bit crazy. Where you have to um, play around some additional mechanics that are very difficult. Not to mention the boss also hits a lot harder and is stronger. People like to do uh, one shots for this final phase using characters like Sigrid with a defense break. So I'm not dealing with any of that because I don't really think it's worth the time. And I, honestly, most people aren't even going to be able to do Epic Hell difficulty. So for now, we're just going through this. We got another defense break. She cleanses that. Another big attack. It takes a little bit, but in general, it's pretty stable. I haven't ever lost uh, with this team either. My Amelia has always been able to remove all the debuffs just fine. I'm not saying that this is the most optimal team, but it works. Uh, none of my teams have lost before, which is pretty nice. Yeah, nice little cheeky dual attack there. And it's just about dead. Okay, it'll die from the bleeds at least. There we go. Yeah, we got a greater mod gem, why not? Um, something else to note is make sure that you have a pet that gives increased um, drops from side stories and stuff like that, because it actually increases this as well. So this is the team that I have right here, but there's actually a lot of other teams that you could possibly run. So for instance, um, you could run, this is actually an epic hell run that somebody did. They used martial artist Ken to solo the entire first wave. They abused Terranor Guard with dual attacks to deal with the second wave. And the third wave, this is a really strange one. I actually don't quite understand this one myself, um, but they used balances on here, which is pretty interesting. The main thing also is if you have characters that have the same types, then you get bonuses. So in the first wave, you'll notice they're all dark. They get um, increased health percentage for each character that's the same element as them. For the second one, I believe you get speed for each one that's the same element. So they only have two water and one red, but, you know, Terranor Guard can really abuse some mechanics. And as for this one, they have triple red, so it's full damage. I believe balance is on most likely just defense breaks and then Sermia one shots at just about any KGs is there for maybe an additional turn or two of healing for Sermia. But notice they use Seaside Bologna, Ram, and Spirit Isolene. They just went full damage. They just tried to rush down. This is um you know probably faster than how mine works. This one they used Milum, Tamarin, Adventure Ross for triple fire and also just kind of rushing down with a lot of damage. Uh, for this one, they use Lilius, Apocalypse, Ravi, and Amelia, which is just kind of a safe team to have because the boss isn't really going to be able to kill any of them. For this team, you've got Martial Artist Ken, Champion, Zerato, Spirit Isolene, just lots of counterattacks. This one, Charlotte, Cecilia, Mercedes. They used Mercedes and Charlotte for tons of AoE, and the Cecilia probably for uh, defense breaks and also immunity for the team. And she actually has a strip built in, and so does Mercedes. And then the final one, they, Amelia, Luna, Lulica, just kind of rush down, right? Um, similar teams to before, they used Politis, Tamar, and Carrot. K 
Carrot can strip buffs and also do damage. Politis is on Yale Violin and also can strip buffs um, with her S3 and S2 uh, on the Violin. And Tamarin can also strip buffs and also heal and give attack buff. And then the final one, you I just rush it down. You do a ton of damage. Um, Luna probably defense breaks and Sigrid does a ton of damage after. So overall, as you can see, it's not actually that restrictive you don't have to use all ml5s or anything like that there's a lot of possibilities out there the hard part is just being able to fit your units together and find the right team so uh, most people aren't going to be able to do an epic hell but just having a team for hell difficulty that you can just turn on auto and turn your brain off and not even have to think about is pretty nice so i'd really recommend trying to do that as for the units that i was using um i'll show them right after but in general i think People have a lot of opportunities and it'll be a pain to set up. Once you have it, you can just sit back and not even think. One last thing though, I'll also be linking um, a little spreadsheet thing of a bunch of information about how the boss works and other stuff in the, in the description. So I hope that helps you. Thanks for watching.